my name is Anders Adolfsson and I am Head of Global Marketing here at Scandidos. Our guest and uh, keynote speaker of today's webinar, Dr. Eduardo Petrucci from Ivrea Public Hospital, will share his department's experience of using the Delta IV Discover clinically. Uh, Dr. Eduardo Petrucci is a clinical physicist at Ivrea and has been there for almost seven years. Um, at the Department of Radiotherapy, Eduardo's areas of focus are planning, quality control, and dosimetry. Please, Eduardo. Hello, hello, everybody. Thanks uh, for a kind of introduction to me. I'm Eduardo Petrucci. I'm a medical physics uh, at the Ivrea Medical Physics Department. And I'm here to tell you about our clinical experience in using Scandidos Discover and Delta Force systems. So, what is Discover? Uh, as Ingmar said before me, it is a transmission detector that is formed by 4,040 detectors separated by 2.5 millimeters along the emergency trajectories and 5 millimeters in the transverse direction. It covers a total area of 195 millimeters per 250 square millimeters. This disc has a dimension of about 1790 millimeters and 23 millimeters of thickness, and it weighs more or less 9 kilos. It has also a laser distance meter on the surface uh, in order to check uh, the body position during the, the anatomy treatment and during the, the measure. And when the system is mounted on the LINAC, it can also be open in order to permit the use of the optical distance indicator and to see the light field. Obviously, it uses uh, ion rechargeable batteries that uh, guarantee the six hours of work, more or less. The instrument can work in two different modalities, one working alone and the other in combination with the Delta IV Phantom. In the express measure mode, only the discovered detector is used. It is possible to perform independent, automatic and compressive QA of the treatment, delivery for a fraction. Is it possible to check the monitor unit, the MLC lift position, the gantry angle, the collimator angle, and the patient setup? But uh, together with the Delta IV Phantom, it can work in data synthesis mode. So, how does it work? During the, during the pre treatment QA, the Delta IV Phantom performs a dose measure and associates it uh, with the fluence measured by the discover. Then, in the subsequent fraction, beside the measure as made in express mode, a dose recalculation is performed based on the difference in the measured fluence. So we can have every day a dose recalculation. Good. To use this before the fermentation, it is necessary to perform three fast calibration each of which is carried out by providing simple open fields. The first is a relative calibration, which serves to measure the signal of all detectors and to check that all the detectors work properly. After this procedure, it is possible to switch off the non-working channels. The second process is a check on the detector position, during which the software analyzes the detector row alignment by moving the board exactly under the lift center of the MLC. Each, uh, each MLC pairs as a detector rows uh, beside. Last, uh, a leaf edge calibration was performed in order to check the position of the detector matrix along the MLC trajectory. You can see in the picture B and C are the two calibration that set up correctly the detector plane. The first step of our implementation was to characterize it on our company TPS and in the, core, in, in, in the record and verify system. We have a variant Eclipse version say 15.6 and ARIA version 50.1. 
In this system, it was necessary to enter only two information, the slot of the LINAC in which it is mounted and the transmission factor of the detector itself. Just out of curiosity, we also perform a PDD and profile measurement with the water phantom, but no significant changes were observed. So it does not be necessary to create a machine on the TPS. We have only our machine, and you add, when you make a treatment plan, you add the discover as a wedge, as a try. So it's very easy to use, even in the software. As we told uh, before, it was necessary to insert the transmission factor in the TPS and in the record and verify system. In order to do that, uh, we perform a different measurement to verify the suggested values of 0.99%. So we made uh, open field EMRT treatment measure, and we found a mean value of about 0.985%, so very similar to the one suggested. Obviously, we made all these measurements uh, with uh, 6 uh, MV, only with 6 MV because we use it now especially with uh, VMAT and similar, so only the six megavolts are included. In order to check uh, also the goodness of this value, we perform measurement with and without the discovery, delivering the same monitor units. After a 3D dose distribution comparison confirm the suitability of the measure transmission factor. So a second check after the first measure. The second step in the implementation was the implementation of the on the Linux software on the machine workstation. We use it on a variant through beam, so it is necessary in the system administration to set it up. And it's very simple, it's only to popping up a simple checkbox in a window. The next step was to activate the ID interface in order to permit the generation and the communication of the automatic trigger signal from the LINAC to the measurement PC. This is the auxiliary device interface process provided by Varian that let the Scandidos Delta 4 software talk automatically with the TrueBeam accelerator. In particular, the LINAC sent to the measurement PC information about patient and field record and permits the start and the stop of the measurement process in a fully automatic way. So no need to interact with the Discover software. This helps, uh, especially during uh, the treatment of the patient, not only in the QA situation, but uh, during the everyday use. So um, until now, it is seems very easy to the implementation, but there are still uh, some pros and some cons. The only cause that we found was a little instability of the communication system. Sometimes the Wi-Fi signal was falling during a measurement, and at the time the ID was not properly synchronized. So it, occasionally it was necessary to repeat the, the measurement. But there are also uh, big pros because uh, the easiness of the characterization process uh, it has not been necessary at be modeling, and uh, for this reason, it was not an expensive call. It was really, really fast to use, like more or less, more or less a plug and play system. So, before the clinical implementation, it was necessary to a small step. The first uh, was uh, decided to evaluate the skill dose increase. We made it by considering different field sizes. We measured uh, for open field uh, with an area less or equal to 10 per 10 centimeters, an increase of about 1% in mean value with respect to the max. For open field uh, up to 25 per 25 million centimeters, an increase of about 2.5% uh, in mean value, and for EMRT field, uh, an increase of about 3%. And last but not least, it has been necessary a short training of the RT technicians in the detector mounting process and in the software utilization. 
even if the AD implementation it uh, in a terrific way, but uh, just to to make it simple, we, we made some trial session of uh, measurement uh, so that the RT technicians can use it in an easy way. So until now, we arrive uh, finally at the clinical implementation and at our first clinical protocol. Our entry clinical protocol concerns only prosthetic patients and relies on the utilization in beta synthesis mode. So together with the Delta IV Phantom during the pretreatment QA. In order to increase gradually the workload of the technicians, we decide to use the discover system only during the, five, the first five fraction, uh, like the convincity. So step by step, they can learn uh, correctly the process, they can not uh, lose time, uh, and so on. They were a little bit uh, afraid of this system, but now they see it's very, very easy. But the first day, first patient, Side, something like this to make it, to make it easier. So the first results we had, uh, until now we treated 10 prostate patients. For each of them uh, we have uh, the pre-treatment result uh, and the strain analysis uh, for the first five fractions. On this patient uh, we made MLC performance evaluation uh, using the MLC gamma index that is a specific parameter provided by the Discover software. We also check daily the collimeter angle, the gantry angle, the patient setup, using for this detection the embedded laser distance meter. And since we were working in delta synthesis mode, every day a dose evaluation with a 3D dose gamma index was performed. Just in the critical case, and just for our curiosity, we check also the signal registered for particular MLC lift pair. But uh, we talk in this uh, slide of the MLC gamma index, uh, but what is the MLC gamma index? Uh, it is an index computed in analogy with the dose deviation gamma index, as you can see from the formula uh, presented by Lowe et al. It evaluates the leaf deviation with respect to the gantry angle. For each gantry angle, there is a planned value for this leaf the edge deviation. The user uh, can set the acceptance criteria even for this parameter, even in this situation. So every day, every treatment fraction, and for every leaf, a gamma index is computed linking the deviation on the tips of the MLC and the gantry position. As a start, uh, in our institution, we choose an acceptance criteria of one degree per one millimeter of distance. So we made our analysis using uh, this criteria. So as far as the result, uh, these are our first plots, uh, some examples. Uh, uh, it is possible to see some of the many trend analysis that the software uh, performs. Uh, the first graph here uh, regards the max collimator deviation in degrees measured uh, by the system. The square, the square point uh, on the right represents the mean value, while all the other points represent the five fraction uh, delivered, and uh, you can see the trend uh, of the fraction of the error, of the position, etc. In the, second, uh, in the second plot uh, is the median person dose deviation with respect to this planet dose. Also in this case, a square, the square point on the right represents uh, the mean value. We can do this uh, median dose deviation calculation because we use uh, the discover in delta synthesis mode, so with the delta four phantom. Next. Uh, Next graph uh, that I want to show you are the gamma index pass rates uh, for the detectors. Uh, so the, 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 the 3D dose distribution gamma index pass rate. We use uh, for this analysis uh, acceptance criteria of about 2% two millimeters. And even in this case, the square point on the right is the mean value, while the, the round point 
is the trend of, the, of each uh, fraction. And the last graph uh, shows uh, this uh, MLC gamma index pass rate. We use, uh, as I told you before, one millimeter for one degree. And also in this case, uh, there is a, a good, uh, it's a good uh, passing rate for each diffraction, even the new value is about 99%. Uh, so in the daily usage routine, also we found some pros and some cons. Uh, let's start with the, with the pros uh, that are the biggest one. So no time consuming in daily routine because uh, in our institution we choose that all the patients that use the discover during the treatment pass uh, all together one after the other. So we mount the discover one time, we, pay, we make all the fraction of this patient and then we put it off uh, when the last patient ended. We have to say that there are many useful analysis tools for the real, dose, real dose verification and the machine assurance with the machine QA. The analysis of the data is really, really fast. Uh, immediately after the ending uh, of the fraction delivery, you have uh, the results, so you can see the result. The software is really user friendly. There is also a possibility to make in uh, only in a measurement mode that there is a small window in which the technicians can say start and stop uh, and uh, nothing more. And there is another version in which uh, the physicists can make uh, their analysis and their interpretation. And it is possible also uh, to have uh, a daily QA, uh, daily QH evaluation because it is possible to pass to the software uh, the RT structure file. So when he, he performs uh, the dose recalculation, it makes this recalculation also to the structures of the patients. But there are also some little scones. Uh, we saw some difficult, we, we find some difficult in the use of the laser range finder, even because uh, the couch of the Linux has a reflecting surface that doesn't help so much. Sometimes uh, we found some random inaccuracy in assessing the MLC tip position. And um, we are checking now why we are working on it. And uh, sometimes it happens that uh, it is necessary to override the collision interlock uh, on uh, the true beam because uh, maybe for biggest patient, uh, the system doesn't collide, but the software see a collision. So it is, uh, it is necessary to override it uh, pressing the button during the treatment. But, uh, it is happening until now only for two patients of the time that we have, uh, we have treated. And last, uh, last thing that's uh, it's a little bit strange, uh, until now there is no possibility of extracting the, the diodes uh, signal matrix. You can see all the analysis performed by the, by the system and you can extract uh, the dose from the phantom, from the Delta IV phantom, but until now not the, the, the diode signal from the discover, it, it's not possible to extract. So uh, now we treat a distinct patient, but uh, in the future we have uh, some ideas. We will, our first intention is to make it a continuous use in all the treatment fraction. So all the, for this kind of patient, for the process patient, we want to use it for all the treatment fraction. Second step, obviously, is to, is to make an implementation in different anatomical districts. So not only prostates, but enlarge the patient's kind that we treat with this system. Obviously, and this is the most important thing that we want to use for, is for the SBRT treatment, because the few fraction, I dose, so this is the best, use we can do of this. And uh, another idea is that we have, uh, we are working on it, is the implementation of this software in our machine QA program. So the user, we, we can check uh, machine parameters using this system and uh, that is, uh, it will be very, very easier for us uh, with respect to the, 
to our to the situation that we have now. So these are our intention. We make uh, the, uh, this work. So I think uh, it has been very interesting. Uh, now I want to say thanks uh, to all uh, the staff of the medical physics department that works on this project. Uh, my colleagues uh, Valeria Casanova Borca and Lorenzo Radici. The, the technical staff, uh, Maurizio Bertudato, that help us with measurements and measurements and measurements, and our director, Massimo Pansuino. Also, I have to say thanks uh, to Nicola Franza, that came here at a different time, helping us uh, answering our question, uh, speaking with the standard of uh, people. Thank you very much, uh, Eduardo. Very insightful. Um, with me today, I have my colleague Ingmar Vibay, who is one of the two founders of Scandidus. He will make an introduction to the product Delta IV Discover. Thank you, Anders. Thank you for the <coughs> kind introduction. Uh, I will uh, give you first just a short introduction about uh, the Delta IV family and the Delta IV Discover to show a little bit uh, background on what it is. So uh, we at Scandidos, we have been uh, <clears throat> working with for the last 18 years with uh, patient QA, developing new QA. And indeed the patient QA has changed a lot during these years. And we are very proud that we have been part of this uh, change. Uh, <clears throat> but we're not only developing products, we're also very uh, important for us that is uh, that we deliver our products together with uh, uh, an accurate training and the support and after sales support for our customers. And uh, today we have over 800 customers in uh, and systems in use in uh, in 50 countries. Yeah, the reason we're doing this is, uh, of course, that we uh, are very uh, concerned about the, the patient's safety. We want to avoid that the uh, patients are injured during uh, treatments. And in general, the treat radiotherapy is very safe. But unfortunately, you have all seen several of these uh, headlines in in, uh, paper, in the newspapers and you all know that uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg there are a lot more things that this actually happened fortunately not so many that leads to these uh, very sad uh, injuries or even death by patients uh, and this is not limited to just a few uh, small clinics somewhere. Uh, this is actually some even happening in in quite big institutions, where well-renowned uh, hospitals. And uh, there is a study in in the in the UK, United Kingdom, where they have been looking at this, where they have been reporting voluntarily. And they have found that uh, irregularities are very frequent. There are, in fact, hundreds per year per clinic. And these irregularities, when they coincide, they can actually lead to, uh, to uh, accidents. And that's what we want to avoid, of course. Uh, the, <clears throat> the Delta for family, is a, a range of, of products uh, for adapted for different uh, kind of, uh, of QA that covers from the plan evaluation uh, that uh, assesses the quality of the plan to the executability of the plan, when it, which we do with pre-treatment verification and to online dose monitoring and today we will uh, look at online dose monitoring so first i'd like to show you this short video here where you can uh, you should be able to see now the uh, the, the delta 4 discover 
that's a transmission detector uh, that sits mounted on the, the gantry head and uh, <clears throat> it's a transmission detector with high resolution de uh, detector grid to, to determine exactly where the dose is delivered during the treatment. So why using transmission detector during treatment? Uh, we are working from uh, uh, from uh, the uh, from, uh, with, with the assumption that you, when if you want to verify the, the the dose to the patient, you have two things that you need to take into consideration. One is that what's coming out of the machine, that is the dose verification. And then you have to verify the anatomy of the of the patient to verify the structures of the patient. And if you want to do this with accuracy, you need to do this with separate uh, devices. And the only way that we, you can do it is with accuracy for the dose is that you use a transmission detector. And when you have these two parameters, then you can even take uh, your QA to uh, and implement it also in your treatment and make uh, an adaptive uh, radiotherapy. The Delta IV Discover unit itself, that is uh, the device, it's a transmission detector, as we said, it automatically verifies the monitor units delivered by the machine the MLC position for each control point. It also verifies that the gantry angle and the collimator angles are correct per control point. And it even measures the, the patient source skin distance. And this is done then without any further preparations from the from the, the clinic. You just import the plan and then you set it up that it should be uh, measuring this plan, and it that's done automatically without any uh, interaction from the staff. You could also add then uh, the, the to use. Uh, Phantom to what you use for normal and for pretreatment verification that will give you a dose uh, information, the dose that is uh, delivered into to a phantom, where you can also take that dose and make 3D dose and make uh, dose volume uh, analysis of the delivery. <laughs> Now you only need to do, you do this uh, pre-treatment or you do this, uh, you can even do it post-treatment if you want. It doesn't really matter when in time that you are doing this. Um, <clears throat> but um, when you have done that, then you can apply that for all subsequent uh, fractions or also even uh, all uh, previous fractions. So then with uh, only the, the uh, discover measurement you can uh, not only verify the the treatment parameters but also the dose to the patient and if you for example have some uh, deviations you can assess then the impact on, that it has on the patient dose uh, there are two questions that are quite common <coughs> when we talk that comes up when we talk about the transmission detector and discover one is can i do pre-treatment verification without the phantom and uh, related to that is can i skip the tedious pre-treatment qa and only measure during the treatment and uh, the answer is uh, yes or part conditionally yes <laughs> which uh, I will uh, answer uh, now uh, how, how it, uh, why I say it so. Uh, during a presentation uh, of the Discover, there was once a physicist who uh, became quite enthusiastic about this and said they saw them there that they could change the way they were doing the, the QA from doing phantom measurements and, uh, and do more focus on doing online uh, dose monitoring. 
they express it like that. Instead of predicting potential errors, we can now focus on catching real errors when they actually occur. Uh, <clears throat> so in order to, to, to explain that, we can look at what you do with pretreatment and what you do with treatment of the patient during treatment of the patient. The pretreatment, there you can find the systematic errors the, uh, that uh, gives you an, an error basically on the dose delivered to the patient. Uh, however, that doesn't take the, those random errors that would uh, occur during the treatment. Uh, with the, the phantom, you can verify then the dose and you can indirectly then track back to uh, to machine performance because you have uh, with the phantom plus you have a full uh, time resolution so you can uh, see for the dose per each control point exactly how it is delivered with the discover you can measure some of the of the systematic errors you can catch them but uh, what you don't then um, can, what you cannot do then uh, without the pretreatment uh, QA is uh, the, to, to get the, the dose, the composite dose. So there, there are a couple of ways that you could uh, use uh, the, the Delta 4 Discover and the, the Delta 4 Phantom Plus. And the, just take a few of them here that uh, I'm sure you can find different examples and also de uh, depends of course what kind of, of uh, treatments that you are uh, working with. If you're working with a traditional third uh, fraction schedule or if you're doing an SPRT or SRS uh, schedule where you deliver much higher dose in, in very few fractions. So you can implement this like conventional in vivo schedule like you do with, if you're working with uh, TLDs or diodes. And uh, that's typically you use your, your in vivo measurements on the first few fractions until you see that you are within your, your uh, tolerance levels. And this gives you very good control of the treatment parameters and that the, the patient is positioned uh, correctly. Uh, you can also extend that and reach a little bit higher uh, uh, level of confidence uh, by doing this express measure at all fractions for the patient. Uh, the <coughs> advantage is, of course, that you can catch uh, random errors that uh, occurs during all the fractions. You might have some uh, disadvantages, though, if you have, for example, the electron cones that you would have to mount on the on the gantry it would be a little bit more work. But in principle, that it's not really much more work with doing it uh, for one fraction compared to doing it for all fractions. It's more a practicality from, from your situation. You can also implement that this that you do basically just the express measure and on those occasions where you find some uh, discrepancy from the, the plan. Then you can uh, bring out the, the phantom and measure uh, if something has failed during a treatment. So you can assess how much impact that has on the on the patient. Uh, because then, as I said before, you can with one uh, pre-treatment or post-treatment uh, verification you can uh, assess the, the dose for all the fractions. You can calculate the dose for all fractions based on the measurements that you have done with, uh, with Discover. And of course, if you want to, to be very, uh, very thorough, then, then you can uh, do your, uh, your pre-treatment verification on, on all the patients, uh, like probably most people do today plus adding then the, the discover to, to catch all the uh, uh, all, all the, the random errors as well.
and uh, I think that for most clinics it would make sense to use all of these uh, schedules depending on, on which uh, type of treatment you're, you're working with or in which phase that you are in, in implementing different technologies. Thank you very much, uh, Ingmar. Once again, thank you very much for joining this webinar. And if, um, if you have um, any questions, as I mentioned, you can visit our website, delta4family.com and under contacts, you have your contact person in your country. Bye everyone.